Hi everybody, welcome to the College of Engineering Information Session uh, digital version. Uh, so my name is Emily Rogers. My name is Leo Oliveira. Uh, and we're here representing the Dean's team to give you guys some information about the College of Engineering, uh, some information about our individual majors, things like that. So we'll get started. So what it takes to be a successful College of Engineering student. So we're going to talk about five topics, so creativity, teamwork, study habits, interest in math and science, and challenging high school background. A lot of these kind of correlate and kind of merge in together. So we'll mention when that happens. So creativity, engineering is an ever-solving problem. There's no real clear-cut solution sometimes, and you're always just trying to look for what works best for you. So in regards to finding a creative solution, in regards to finding new ways to solve a problem, creativity usually comes in handy. Teamwork, right from the jump freshman year, you are gonna be put in a team, usually in your foundation engineering class. And this is mainly just to get you used to that engineering environment. No one person knows everything, so having different people on a team that have different expertises works best for everybody in the team. Study habits. So study habits tend to change between high school and college. Usually you find yourself having to study a little bit more after class, and especially a lot more before exams, just because of that rigor and that switch between high school and college becomes a little bit more noticeable once you actually get to college. Interest in math and science kind of plays a part with this. Engineering is very math and science heavy, usually regardless of the major that you go ahead and choose to do. Being involved in math and science classes like physics, calculus, algebra, chemistry in high school helps with that process as well. Challenging high school background kind of plays a part in this. If you're challenging yourself with those IVs, APs, dual enrollments, honors classes, advanced classes in high school, that'll help you out a little bit more with the learning curve once you get to college. So next, some of our stats from our freshman engineering class of 2022. We had an average GPA of a 4.11 on a 5.0 scale, an average SAT math of 695, and reading of 663. Just keep in mind that these are just averages, so we have a lot of people above, a lot of people below. It's really just a ballpark for you to see where you're at. And then in terms of females, 24%, and then underrepresented minorities or underserved populations, we're at 22% and 19% respectively. General engineering, I already covered a little bit of common entry point classes that mainly deals with your entry level classes. So once you get here as a freshman, what type of classes you'll tend to be taking. And then past this, we call them check sheets. So they're kind of tracks for each major and it kind of outlines all four years and all the classes that you will actually have to take. AP, IB, Club, Dual Enrollment. So these are any type of classes that you can take while you're in high school or at a community college to give you college credit here when you get to tech. Pathways for general education curriculum, these are more so your electives that you would take in high school, but more so apply to like college atmosphere. So these are meant to diversify your learning. You're not just taking engineering classes, so you can take anywhere from like a history class, an art class, a music class, and an acting class, and much, much more. Select major at the end of freshman year. So Virginia Tech works in the way that when you apply on the Common App, you apply to Virginia Tech this, uh, your senior year of high school. When you apply all you list, when you're trying to list which major, you list general engineering. Every freshman in engineering at Virginia Tech comes in as a general engineer. If at the end of the second semester of their freshman year, so the spring semester, if they have above a 3.0 GPA, then they're guaranteed their first choice major. What this means is at the end of that spring semester, that summer between your freshman and sophomore year, you are asked to list your top three majors. And if you have above a 3.0 at that time, then you're guaranteed your first choice major. And that's when you begin to take your core classes. And then for building construction, a lot of these are not applicable to building construction because building construction is a little bit more separate so that these engineering foundation engineering classes aren't applicable to building construction majors. Okay, so we did mention a few times the Foundations of Engineering course. So what this is, is two semesters of just learning how to be an engineer, how to be effective in a team, and start building up those skills that you'll need throughout your time at Virginia Tech. So the first semester, Engineering 12-15, like Leo said earlier, you start working in that team from day one, take apart a product, put it back together, do different things like that, and then also learn those intro softwares, things like coding, computer-aided design, so that's things like SOLIDWORKS, uh, if any of you are familiar with those. But we start building up those skills really early because you'll use them throughout your time in engineering. The second semester, you take those skills and apply them to a semester-long design project. And this varies by year and by professor. So this could be things like a solar oven, a drone, an RC car. And students really get into those. So we do also emphasize in this course professional practices and engineering fields and majors, those last two bullet points. 
And essentially what this means in terms of the foundations course is just planning to be successful as an engineer at Virginia Tech and making sure that you're understanding what your options are in terms of engineering fields because there are quite a lot of them and making sure that you find the right path for you. So this is the overview of the 2022 College of Engineering overview. Like it shows here, general engineering is the largest body just because old freshmen that come into Virginia Tech are listed just as general engineers. But if you take any of these numbers divided by three, that is usually your graduating class. So for example, I graduated in the mechanical engineering class and our graduating class was around 300, 400. So, you know, you do a little bit of math divided by three, you should get around roughly the graduating class. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some opportunities within the College of Engineering. The first one we're gonna mention are our engineering minors. So we have quite a few engineering minors that are housed within our College of Engineering. And the benefit of these to our students is that it's usually just a couple extra electives and they pair really well with your major required courses. So things like biomedical engineering are super popular with other majors like mechanical engineering, material science, electrical engineering, things like that. Green engineering is really popular among our environmental and civil engineers. So these are all great options for you. If you want to take a minor outside of the College of Engineering, it's also really easy. You just don't have some of those intro courses covered or some of those overlapping courses that might decrease the number of credits you have to add. But still, super popular. We have a lot of students that will take multiple minors within the College of Engineering or outside of it. One of my friends just graduated from Mechanical Engineering with a theater minor. So definitely easy to kind of span a lot of different colleges here. Undergraduate research is one of the ways that we like to involve our students to get involved um, in more technical-based projects. Undergraduate research is a way for students to apply what they learn in classrooms, what they learn, taking their courses and then actually being able to apply that knowledge that they've learned into a more technical atmosphere. So undergraduate research, it can work in one of three ways. So it can work in, you can be a volunteer, you can get paid to do undergraduate research, or you can get college credit to do undergraduate research. So all three of these obviously have different requirements and different amounts of hours that you would need to put in. But nonetheless, the way that undergraduate research mainly works is that there's professors at Virginia Tech that do research, that have industry sponsors, that do projects that affect Many people outside of Virginia Tech, these professors cannot do all of this research by themselves, so they hire postdoc students, graduate students, PhD students, master's students, and of course undergraduate students, and maybe even high school students as well. The way that it works, you meet with this professor and you reach out to them, and if you're interested in that project and you guys match, then that's how you get started doing undergraduate research. Next, uh, we want to highlight one of our study abroad programs. We do have quite a few opportunities for you to go learn somewhere around the globe, whether that's all the way across the country or all the way across the world. We have a lot of different ways to get there. So this is one program that we really like to highlight. It's our Rising Sophomore Abroad program. We like to abbreviate that RSAP. Essentially how it works, in the spring semester of your freshman year, you take Engineering 1644, which is Global STEM Practice. And in this course, you start learning about how we engineer in different cultures, different contexts, different countries. You also start meeting the people that you're going to be traveling with. So that includes the students that you'll be going with, as well as the faculty mentors that will be guiding you along this trip. Then for two weeks at the end of May, you go travel, study abroad, again, kind of re-emphasizing those points about how engineering is different in different parts of the world. And you can see listed here all of our different locations for 2024. So you'll typically go to one or two countries, depending on which track you choose, and applications open for that during your fall semester. So if studying abroad is something that you're interested in, this is definitely a program that we recommend, especially because that summer between freshman and sophomore year, you usually have a little bit more free time. Maybe you're not super involved in internships or co-ops at that point yet. So this is a really good time to start studying abroad. So I decided to do RSAP because I wanted to study abroad, but not have to worry about the transfer of credits or finding university or being away from my home for extended periods of time. So I decided to go on the UK Ireland track because I've always dreamed about going to like England and Ireland. And so while we were there, we met with a lot of um, like companies for engineering. We met with like two architecture firms. Uh, we did a tour of the mini Cooper plant. We toured some campuses. So we went to like Oxford which was gorgeous and was the only day it rained, obviously. And then we also did a new rising like engineering college where they like teach you how to do like hands-on stuff more than math and science. And then we also got a lot of like free time to go and explore. So I got to see like Big Bang, the Lincoln Eye, a lot of cathedrals. And then we also got to like explore like nightlife and meet a lot of locals, which was really cool. 
So professional societies and engineering organizations, there are plenty of professional society chapters at Virginia Tech. Some of these include the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, Institute of Electrical and Electronics and Engineers, American Society of Civil Engineers, so on and so forth. The really cool thing about these professional societies is, for one, they do have chapters here at Virginia Tech, but these are nationally known organizations. These organizations host conferences, grants, journal papers, conference papers as well. Um, so it's really cool to once you graduate from Virginia Tech, if you want to stay involved in these professional societies and go to their conferences, listen to journal articles, uh, papers that other professionals present based off of their research, this is something that's really cool to get involved in right here at Virginia Tech. Um, engineering organizations, we have a lot of Outside of just professional society, we have engineering organizations such as uh, the National Society of Black Engineers, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, Society of Women Engineers, so on and so forth. These are, of course, student-led, and in the same way that a lot of the professional societies work, these are nationally known organizations, at least some of them are. Uh, so they do also host conferences, career fairs, a lot of pro-dev events outside of Virginia Tech. So also, um, in addition to that, scholarships as well. So there's a lot of organizations here on the screen, but there's also a lot of organizations outside of this PowerPoint. Tech has 900 and plus in organizations in general. Um, so we like to say that there's definitely might be something that is of interest to you in regards to those organizations, but if there isn't, you can always just create your organization, which is just as easy. All right, internships and co-op experiences. Uh, to start off, the difference between an internship and a co-op Internships typically happen over the summer, so you're looking at about a three-month work period whenever you're not in school. And then co-op experiences can last for one, two, or even three semesters. And you actually take time off of college to go work for a company. You're still considered a student at Tech just on co-op for that semester. That's kind of the difference there. It's a little bit of a longer work period for a co-op. But these are some of the companies that the Dean team members have worked with. It's a group of about 50 to 60 of us with some pretty big name companies on the screen here and the map shows mostly where we've been located so you can see a lot of us have been located in Virginia because that's where a lot of the DNC members are from uh, in North Carolina right next to us but we also have students go to Texas, California I know a couple people who went down to Florida and worked for Disney so you can see all the different companies that we have worked with here but Keep in mind, it's not limited to this list, and this is just what the Dean's team has worked with so far. So we have a really large kind of network of connections to these companies. We'll talk a little bit more about that, I think, on the next slide. So career fairs. We have two uh, large career fairs here on campus. So we have the Engineering Expo, which is in the fall, and then we have the Cameo Career Fest, which is in the spring. Um, amongst these two main career fairs, we also have plenty of other career fairs, which are hosted by the engineering department, so uh, mechanical, aerospace, civil, construction, all have their own smaller career fairs as well, with plenty of companies that relate just to those specific majors. Uh, but how career fairs work, the way that they work is company representatives, a uh, really cool thing about that is they're usually alumni. We like to say that Hokies hire Hokies. Uh, so if you see in these pictures, a lot of them are wearing their maroon and orange polos, and a lot of them have the little ribbons on their name tags that say alumni. So representatives come, representing their company, and there's booths set up in a building, in a room, in a hallway really, anywhere uh, where the career fair is taking place. And a student comes up to them, usually shows them the resume, talks to them a little bit. And the point of these types of conversations is to, for one, maybe try and get an internship, a co-op, a full-time job, but also just to network, talk to a company recruiter, get to know a little bit more about what that company does. You know, if all goes well, then you learn a little bit more about the company and perhaps you get something out of it as well. All right, so these are Galileo and Hypatia, which are engineering living learning communities. So we have Galileo, which is targeted towards men, Hypatia, which is targeted towards women. But they're all housed in the same building, and there's a lot of benefits to this program. So the first thing I like to mention is the built-in mentorship program. It's so actually a part of the community. So an upperclassman who just lives down the hall from you will actually take on a group of students, a group of freshmen, and you guys will meet once a week for the first 10 weeks of the semester, talk about things like how to talk to a professor during office hours or when you should go to office hours, study habits, kind of making time for yourself, free time, laundry, anything that you might maybe not think about when you're getting to college, that upper class mentor is there to help you take those steps and sort of ease that transition into college. 
There's also a two credit course that goes along with the program. So that course is focused on professional development, networking yourself, and again, just kind of trying to keep yourself organized as you take those steps into your career, looking at internships, things like that. And then we also have the Invent Studio. So this is a makerspace essentially for students. We've got things like power tools, 3D printers, laser cutters, uh, CNC machines, and then pretty much any sort of other supplies you might need. But a lot of students will take advantage of this space, especially during the spring semester when they're working on that semester long design project, or just come hang out and start learning how to use the machines, make a cool project for your friends or family, things like that. Digirati um, is a new living learning community here at Virginia Tech. It is also under the seat umbrella. Digirati focuses mainly on uh, information technology, on um, systems, on software, but it's not just limited to those students in those majors. Mainly it's just projected towards students that would be interested in any type of information technology, informatics, and it works similarly so that it provides technical knowledge on what these types of fields might have to deal with, what they would want to work on, a small project in regard to that, but also like Galileo and Hypatia, you have those pro dev, those soft skills development aspects to the Girardi as well. Peer mentoring is another program under the seed umbrella. It's another program for freshmen to kind of have that peer mentor who's an upperclassman that might be able to show them the ropes a little bit. This program is not associated with any specific dorm or living learning community, so anywhere you want to live on campus, uh, you can still be a part of this program. But similarly to the program built into Galileo and Hypatia, we have the first 10 weeks of the semester, meet once a week with a small group of students and an upper class mentor. Their job is really to make sure that you're taking all the steps that you need to take freshman year, kind of give you reminders about little things that maybe you saw in your inbox but then forgot about. Things like career fair prep, making your resume, making a LinkedIn page, that's all stuff that we can help you out with, kind of on the professional development side of things. So STEP, Student Transition Engineering Program, like I said, also known as STEP, is a program that takes place for incoming freshmen this summer right before they enter into their freshman year. The way that it works is that students are able to come to Virginia Tech, stay in the dorm, eat the food, take the classes from the end of June into the end of July. So it's a five-week program, and the really cool thing about STEP is that you are taking classes such as Foundations of Engineering, Chemistry, and Calculus, which are three of the main classes that you'll take in the fall, your freshman year. It's really interesting to see and be able to actually come to campus, you know, a month or two before you actually start the semester. You get to know the campus, you get to know the professors, you get to know new friends, the food. Uh, but more importantly, you get to take these classes that you'll be taking in just a few months. So it's almost like a trial run for when you actually take these classes. One of the cool things about STEP is that it is of no consequence to you. So it does not affect your GPA. If you perform poorly in STEP, it's more of like a preparatory trial and you get to get your feet wet in regards to taking these classes so that when you come back in the fall and you take these classes for real this time, usually uh, students see a bigger reflection of their performance here. All right, so next up, we're going to talk about our Wear Lab design teams. So the motto for the Wear Lab is hands-on, minds-on. What the Wear Lab is, is a student space that houses all of the design teams listed here. So we have a bunch of different separate bays for each design team. They do a lot of really cool stuff. Some cool ones to point out in the pictures here. That left picture is the Bolt design team. They build an electric motorcycle, take it to competitions, race against other teams. You get kind of that entire experience from building something all the way to seeing how it performs and compares to others. That top right picture is our Formula SAE team. Again, similar kind of thing. They build the car, take it, race, compare it to other schools, things like that. And then the bottom right picture is the human-powered submarine, which is exactly what it sounds like. A lot of our ocean engineering students will build a submarine that is powered by one of their team members. And again, take it, compete with it, and we always seem to place pretty well in national and international competitions. Most of these teams will go at least once a year to a competition. Engineering rankings, number 16 best undergraduate program, number 30 best graduate program according to US News and World Report, and number seven producers of engineers, number eight producers of women engineers according to the American Society for Engineering Education. So we just like to share some of these and just show the type of education that you might be getting if you come here to Virginia Tech. Okay, and then some of our outcomes from 2022. Our freshman who continued to a second year in engineering is at 87% over 
over the last five years, so that's pretty high. For engineering programs, it just kind of goes to show that your freshman year, while it is going going to be different from high school, it's not meant to be a bunch of weed out courses or to get you to quit the program. We really have a lot of resources to support you while you get through those courses and that number is reflected here. After graduation from the about 60% who answered us, we had 70% employment and 15% planning to attend graduate school or have already accepted their admission to graduate school. This will vary by major, so we'll highlight some of those differences later. And then lastly, the median starting salary is at 74000 compared to about 66000 for the rest of the university. Scotch is always super important and it's a nice transition from uh, Emily's last point in the last slide. So for freshmen, the really cool thing about how scholarships work is that you apply to the General University Scholarship application that winter right before you come to campus and that applies you to a few scholarships so that in the spring when you get financial aid packet, you have all the listed scholarships and grants that you have earned uh, by filling out this application. There are definitely, of course, the Leo A. Pattis Scholarship for transfer students coming in from a Virginia Community College school. And for upperclassmen, another cool way that these work is that you only need to apply to one scholarship called the College Engineering Funds, fill out one essay, and the way that it works is once you fill it out once, you don't have to do it again, filters down from college from university scholarships all the way down to departmental college scholarships. So the way that that works is that we have alumni that say that they graduated from chemical engineering department. If they decide to donate some sum of money to Virginia Tech, sometimes instead of donating to the college, Virginia Tech, or the College of Engineering, sometimes they just donate straight to chemical engineering department here at Virginia Tech so that this money is disposable to only chemical engineers at Virginia Tech. So that's kind of how this College of Engineering Funds Departmental Scholarships deal works here at Virginia Tech. So computer requirements for the College of Engineering, these are updated yearly and they're listed online. We do require a laptop or two-in-one tablet that also has Windows 11. You will be running a lot of pretty heavy software, so the SolidWorks, MATLAB, things like that can be a little draining to a computer, so definitely recommend checking those requirements so that you'll have enough um, storage space, RAM, everything like that to make sure that those programs can run efficiently. We do not recommend MacBooks because they aren't compatible with all of our engineering software, so please keep that in mind uh, if you are a Mac user and definitely check out the requirements on the website. So majors, uh, we're going to get right into it. There are a lot of majors here at Virginia Tech. Uh, so we're going to give a little brief overview over all of them. So electrical engineering, I like to pair up with computer engineering and then computer science, which are the next few slides. But electrical engineering uh, mainly deals with the electronics and hardware side of these systems. The really cool thing about electrical engineering is that there are a lot of design teams that have a lot of electrical engineers on them. We have Bolt in the top left corner, and we have several others in the images again. But really, electrical engineers can work on anything in regard to micro nanosystems, photonics, space systems, entire electrical grids, so it can go from 0 to 100, really, in regard to the span of what they could be working on. Computer engineering, it's kind of that middle ground that I like to say uh, between electrical engineering and computer science, so it's mainly tying in all that hardware, the chips, the microchips, uh, that we look at in electrical engineering and then tie it into the software, which is the next slide, which is computer science. Computer science is now our largest major here at Virginia Tech. It recently passed mechanical engineering a few years ago. One of the really cool things about computer science is that you can do just about anything um, with a computer science degree. So working in regard to a very hard and technical engineering application such as automotive or aviation, all the way down to anything more like HR or real estate or anything in regard to economics or businesses. The entire spectrum of what computer science can work in is massive. So human computer interaction, software engineering, science of computing, systems and networking are all things that computer scientists can do uh, with a degree in computer science. Top left is the VisCube, which is an augmented reality um, cube that is here at the Moss Art Center at Virginia Tech. A um, really cool thing with this is that students and faculty can go in there and kind of take place in a virtual reality type of atmosphere in this cube. Bottom left is BT Hacks, which is a hackathon that takes place over the weekend, sometime during the semester. An upperclassman write a program that students are able to volunteer with, try and hack into that program. Mechanical engineering is kind of our 
Jack of all trades type of major here at Virginia Tech. Like I said before, it's our second largest major at Virginia Tech. So anything in regard to taking classes in automotive or energy or materials, nuclear, fluids. Uh, so we try and touch a little bit on each major uh, while mainly focusing on a few core topics. A really cool thing about mechanical engineering is there's a lot of design teams at Virginia Tech, there's a lot of research experiences, and more likely than not, you'll probably find a mechanical engineer on the design team. Some of those are listed here below. So you have Formula SAE, bottom right, you have Baja, top right, and then top left, you have a little robot. So if you've ever been to a Virginia Tech football game, if you've ever seen a Virginia Tech football game at TV, if Virginia Tech is playing at Layton Stadium, then four cadets lift up another cadet on this wooden plank, and the cadet on the top does push ups. Every time Virginia Tech scores a touchdown, the engineers at in the mechanical engineering department created a little robot to do, to do those push-ups for us. So it's a nice little plug for what all the students at the mechanical engineering department here at Virginia Tech does. Aerospace engineering is next. So our aerospace engineers focus on a lot of different things as well. This could be anything from space travel and literally being a rocket scientist to things like satellites, keeping things a little closer to home, or looking at just generally things that fly. So any planes, uh, whether that be commercial, army, military, anything like that uh, that really moves through the air is what our aerospace engineers focus on. And I do want to kind of note here, because they'll come back in a minute, the propulsion and structures and vehicle designs are really a big highlight in aerospace engineering, but those will come back on the next slide too. Some things to point out here, uh, that top left picture is a Trent engine from Rolls-Royce. Uh, it's hanging from the ceiling in Goodwin Hall. So if you're ever on campus, definitely take a stop there, walk into the lobby and look straight up, it's right above you. The bottom left picture is one of our design teams, Design Build Fly. It is kind of what the name sounds like, so there's a lot of aerospace engineers on that team as well. And then the top right picture is our drone cage. So if you end up building a drone for that second semester uh, Foundations of Engineering project, this is where you'll actually get to take it and test it, um, but that's also right on campus. Moving into ocean engineering, our aerospace and ocean engineering departments are pretty closely tied together. It is the Department of Aerospace and Ocean Engineering. But like I said on the last slide, kind of bringing back the propulsion structures and vehicle dynamics, those topics are really similar between these two majors. Um, and so a lot of those core classes are similar. What that means is that a lot of our ocean engineering students are also double majoring with that aerospace engineering. So if our aerospace engineers focus on making things move through the air, our ocean engineers focus on making something move through the water. So this kind of takes the vehicle design to a little bit of a different level uh, because you're working with water, a lot more pressure, uh, things like that that you need to consider as an ocean engineer. But this is one of our majors with 100% job placement. And some cool things to point out here, that top right picture is another design team housed in the wear lab that is Sailbot. And it's essentially a collaboration between our ocean engineers and some of our computer engineering, computer science students to make a sailboat that can essentially steer itself uh, through the water. And again, they do take that to national competitions. Uh, and then the bottom right picture is our human powered submarine team again, as we mentioned them earlier. Industrial and systems engineering is that bridge between the business side and the engineering side. So anything in regard to human factors, to ergonomics, uh, to supply chain, to manufacturing, to how to manage projects, our industrial and systems engineering majors will uh, be specializing in in their classes and what they do in their projects, in their courses, in their relationships with their professors. And so it's kind of like that middle ground, like I said before, between the business side of things and the engineering side of things, and they kind of get kind of the best of both worlds in regard to the content and what they're prepared for in the major. Nice little plug for industrial and systems engineering. It is ranked top five in the nation for industrial systems engineering programs in the U.S. Next up is chemical engineering. Chemical engineering is another major that is super broad, kind of like mechanical engineering, but here we're focused really on the chemical side of things, but everything is made up of some kind of chemistry. So this could be anything like materials such as polymers, biotechnology and biomaterials, looking into the research or marketing side of chemical engineering. There are a whole bunch of different things that you can do. But our chemical engineers have a really strong background in chemistry uh, throughout their time here, as well as different ways of applying chemistry. And that kind of varies based on what track they end up choosing within the major. So some cool examples of design teams that we have for our chemical engineers. We have the Chemi car, which is a chemical engineering exclusive 
design team and essentially they make a little car, make their own battery for it using different chemicals and then compete that against other schools. We also have Chemi Cube, which is sort of like a Shark Tank uh, based design team and our chemical engineers will come up with a project or topic, present it to a board of investors, which are either actual company investors or professors who would like to invest their time and resources into their project. And again, it's like a competition, you know, who can get the most funding against other institutions. And then lastly, chemical engineering is our only engineering major with a built-in study abroad program. So between your junior and senior year, there is a lab to take over the summer. You can take it in Blacksburg, Denmark, or Germany. So there's a lot of cool options there uh, to study abroad as well. Material science and engineering, um, everything that we're sitting on, standing on, looking at, all made up of materials. Uh, material science and engineering majors here at Virginia Tech, look into that. So look into the composites, the ceramics, metals, polymers, anything that we're looking at is made of, the composition of them. Um, one really cool thing that we like to mention about materials science and engineering is that in the top left shows a football player called Cedric Hume. He injured his arm some way, somehow at a game or at practice and he couldn't play with a big cast during a game because that would risk hurting himself or maybe hurting other people on the team or the opponent. So the students and faculty in the material science and engineering program here at Virginia Tech made him more of like a sling that both protected him um, gave him that support and comfort that he needed to play, but also protect the other players on the team. So the way that it goes is that Cedric Hume wears this sling to a game. He ends up scoring a touchdown Virginia Tech, ends up winning a game. So it's a huge thing that we like to bring up in regards to celebrating football here at Virginia Tech, but also material science and engineering. So bottom right is the foundry. So it is our molten metals lab. Um, the building that the foundry is housed in is the hottest building on campus. Uh, so that's a really cool thing to mention about the foundry. Next up is civil engineering. This is a major that a lot of people have heard of, um, but again, we really like to highlight our civil engineering department here. So it is our department of civil and environmental engineering. So a lot of our environmental engineers will be housed in the civil engineering department, um, but we do have a couple other options we'll talk about in a little bit. But our civil engineers do a lot of different things and they have a little bit more rigid tracks between them. So depending on what you decide you wanna do by the end of your sophomore, or the end of your junior year, you can kind of specialize into one of those fields. This includes things like construction, transportation, water resources, uh, whatever you find is the best fit for you. So some cool things to talk about here, that top left picture is our steel bridge design team, and they are another team housed in the wear lab. They design a steel bridge, take it, build it at the competition, and compete again against other schools. The bottom right picture, again, another design team, but that is our concrete canoe. It is a canoe made fully out of concrete. I don't know how it works, but they do. Uh, and that's, you know, if you're really interested in materials or structures, definitely a good place to get involved in civil engineering is on those design teams. Next, if you're really interested in the construction side of civil engineering, we do have our construction engineering and management degree. So this is an engineering degree, but we focus on really three main topics. So there's the architectural side of things, where you look at how buildings are designed and why we design them that way. You look at the engineering side of things, so what materials are we using, how strong will they be, how long will this building last, and then the management side of things. So how do we oversee entire job sites, long-term projects, things like that that are really important to construction companies. And I will say that this is a major that was created out of industry need. So we had people from the construction industry come to Virginia Tech and say, we need an engineer who can do this, this, and this. And that is how this major uh, was created. It is one of our majors with 100% job placement. Other cool things to point out, if you graduate from here with a construction engineering and management degree, you get to wear an orange hard hat at graduation instead of the typical cap. They do still have the little tassel though, so don't worry about that. And then we also have a lot of construction projects on campus that students are able to get involved with. If you ever visit campus, we are always building something new. So there's a lot of opportunities for students to be involved with that process while they're still here. Next is building construction. So building construction is kind of our exception uh, to the norm with engineering. So they are housed within the College of Engineering, but building construction is not an engineering degree. So you apply directly into the building construction major and start off there from the beginning. You don't have to go through the initial general engineering process and then declaring your major. Just start in building construction. Our building construction students take a lot of internships. So 
they focus really more on the management side of these projects, so less on the engineering side of things, uh, the structural components, things like that. They really focus on how do we oversee construction sites and what can we do to make that process more efficient. And they will take typically three or four internships during their time at Virginia Tech, and they have separate organizations that really focus on building construction uh, and kind of building people up in that department. So mining and minerals engineering is our next major that we're going to talk about. Mining and minerals engineering majors here at Virginia Tech look at digging rock out of the ground, excavating it, um, of course, and as well as pulling out any useful ores that we might want from that. The cool thing about mining and minerals engineering is if you've ever been to campus and you've seen that nice little stone in front of the buildings, um, that stone is called Hokie Stone, and you only find Hokie Stone on a Virginia Tech building. Uh, Virginia Tech actually owns the only mine of Hokie Stone. Um, and a lot of our mining and minerals engineering majors here at Virginia Tech are able to go to that mine, look at it, see what they do, talk with the workers there at that mine. In addition to this, mining and minerals engineering majors also do go on a lot of field trips as well uh, to different mines, to different job sites. One cool perk about this major is that it also has 100% job placement when you graduate from Virginia Tech. Next up is biological systems engineering. Uh, so if you're really interested in science, like biology and chemistry, that bio and chem really plays a role uh, in our biological systems engineering program. So we do have a lot of environmental engineers who go this route, uh, but essentially biological systems has five main tracks. Uh, even though they are a smaller major, these tracks are really different and pretty split. So this could be anything from biotechnology, so looking at the healthcare system, looking at different things like vaccine production, and that all kind of goes into health professions as well. Or if you're interested more in watershed or the environment, that's kind of where we see a lot of those outdoor projects, research. Uh, you can see a picture there of some of our research students actually in a local creek, looking at the health of that stream, the environment uh, and the ecosystem there. And there's also aspects like food engineering. So how we kind of preserve food, how we make food, and what we can do to, again, better improve the quality of that. But really, in essence, our biological systems engineers will look at any biological system, whether that is a single cell or the entire ecosystem of a local population. Next is biomedical engineering, which is my major. So our biomedical engineers do a whole bunch of different stuff, and really we kind of focus in three main areas. So this is biomechanics, or looking at sort of the forces within your body, how those impact movement, how you walk, how you run, things like that. We also look at biomedical devices, which is all the medical technology you see around you. So uh, whenever you get an x-ray, who makes that x-ray machine? It's usually a biomedical engineer. Same thing with other imaging modalities, so ultrasound, MRIs, um, CTs, and how are all those things different, but also things like pulse oximeters, which are the little clamps that get put on your finger whenever you go to the doctor's office, uh, digital thermometers, surgical tools, anything like that, that's all included under biomedical devices. And then our last one is tissue engineering or cell engineering, so looking at how we can improve tissues, cells, how we can continue to look into things like cancer research, um, or really any kind of disease research. We have a lot of that going on here on campus. A lot of our student groups kind of focus on these different aspects as well. So the top left picture is Bioactivity, which is one of our design teams. They focus on making medical devices uh, to help out our local populations, uh, but they also have a biomechanics side to their projects, looking at, again, how humans are interacting with these things, stuff like that. We have two pretty large design teams as well that are focused on making custom prosthetics and orthotics for local members of our community. Um, so those are really cool things to get involved with if you're interested in making prosthetic uh, devices to help people out. Uh, and lastly, we do a lot of research in the biomedical engineering department. So one lab to highlight in the bottom right there is our BT helmet lab. Uh, and essentially we've tested all sorts of helmets. Uh, I think we started with football helmets, then we went to bike helmets, hockey helmets, Really any kind of helmet you can think of and test the strength of those and how well they are protecting our players. And we've shared those rankings with other institutions, different people across the globe, really to make sure that all of the players are being protected as much as they can from concussions, head injuries, things like that. So lots of cool stuff in the biomed department.
And if you want any more information, this is a QR code to our Explorer Engineering BT page. You can scan here. Uh, obviously, we can't say everything there is to know about all of the majors, so this is definitely a good place to check out. One thing I will mention that we didn't highlight earlier, you'll notice that general engineering is not in our list of engineering majors because you cannot graduate with a degree in general engineering. You will have to specify, uh, again, pretty much very early in your engineering career here. So our last question before we wrap up here is a um, question for Emily and I. So it is, why did I come to College of Engineering at Virginia Tech? Uh, so my story is a little bit different than a lot of students here. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, so I am an out-of-state student. Uh, and Virginia Tech wasn't super on my radar because when I was applying to school here, they actually didn't have biomedical engineering, uh, which is what I've been focused on for almost 10 years now. Um, so definitely something that I saw as a need uh, for myself to have. But I reached out to a couple professors in the biomed department here. We've had the grad school around for a long time. So one of my high school counselors recommended that I reach out to some of the professors here. And one of them got back to me, had a meeting with my mom and I when I was on campus, uh, and kind of explained to me how in engineering there are a dozen different ways to get to the same end goal. And that there's a lot of different ways that you can get to your career goals, uh, even without a specific degree program for something really niche. But a few months later, he forwarded me the article that Virginia Tech was adding biomedical engineering as an undergraduate degree, and I was pretty much sold. Uh, that professor has made a huge difference in my career here at Virginia Tech. I've been in his lab for starting my fifth year now um, in his lab, and he's taken me all the way from my first year on campus, um, really the first couple months on campus, all the way to now my graduate program. So the, uh, the big thing for me at Virginia Tech has always been the community, you know, a professor willing to meet with some random out-of-state student who wasn't even sure if she wanted to come here, all the way to, you know, the support that I've gotten from both my peers, my mentors, and the faculty here at Tech has just made, like, the biggest difference for me, and I have no regrets. I've, I've loved being a Hokie from day one. So for me, it's a little bit, um, you know, farther back in regards to when my journey started. Um, so when I was going into first grade, my brother was going into his first year of college. Lo and behold, that college ended up being Virginia Tech. So I remember dropping him off here at Virginia Tech. When I was a little saying goodbye to him, realizing that he was gonna go away for a while and he was gonna study engineering. Um, and I really looked up to my brother, so I remember setting my mind around that time period that, okay, I was gonna do exactly what my brother was gonna do and I was gonna be an engineer. I didn't really know what engineering was until I got to around middle school. And then I realized, okay, engineering is something that you know I might actually be interested in. Um, so once I realized that math and science was a big component of engineering, I started working a little bit harder on improving my grades in math and science, um, adding more extracurriculars, uh, getting myself a little bit more acquainted with what I might be doing or what I might be interested in in regards to majors. Uh, so by the time the entire process of applying to College World Round, I of course applied to Virginia Tech. I applied super early on um, I, and I got my decision in December and it was the biggest sigh of relief being able to uh, you know, get that email, open up the port on seeing that I was accepted to Virginia Tech. It was the easiest decision ever, uh, taking that decision, actually seeing that dream uh, actually come to place and actually seeing it unfold. And I've been at Virginia Tech just like Emily for the past four years, and I've, it hasn't come with, uh, obviously it's difficult periods, um, but it's definitely been just an absolute blast being here. Like Emily said, the faculty, the students are super supportive. Um, everybody here, regardless of if they're student or faculty or staff, are always supportive of the students, of each other. Um, everyone's trying to help each other achieve their goals, whether that is um, to graduate, um, to complete a project, to do a research project. Um, and that's really um, the brightest thing about Virginia Tech. If you have questions, please find the Dean's Team website. It's under the SEED umbrella again, but we do have contact information on there for you to reach out. Um, but we thank you for joining us again virtually, and please don't hesitate to reach out, and we hope to see you here. Bloopers. <laughs> what the heck, New York? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm the best. Crawl forward, crawl.